Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss ultrasound guided intercostal brachial nerve block, which is T2, thoracic second spinal nerve. The objectives of my presentation are introduction of intercostal brachial nerve block, relevant anatomy of the intercostal brachial nerve, pre operative assessment and preparation, indication of the intercostal brachial nerve. Contraindication of intercostal brachial nerve block, complication and side effects, prerequisite of the block, equipment and logistic required, ultrasound setting, sono anatomy of intercostal brachial nerve, making position for block, conduct of the block, intraoperative care, postoperative care, and clinical tips. Introduction of the intercostal brachial nerve block. In uh, this technique, intercostal brachial nerves approach at superior medial portion of the upper arm. It is almost the same level of the axillary brachial plexus block. Intercostal brachial nerve block is identified in subcutaneous plane and is blocked in combination with axillary brachial block. In cases where tourniquet is required, or if the surgery is required in this area of the superior medial portion of the upper arm. As the intercostal brachial nerve is a thin cutaneous nerve and has a variable anatomy, in some cases it may not be visible. In this situation, the intercostal brachial nerve can be blocked perfectly by injecting local anesthetic solution and opening subcutaneous plane transversely by hydrodissection under ultrasound guidance. Lastly, landmark technique can be used effectively, we will discuss in next slides. This is one of the most easily blocked nerve and it can be done without ultrasound or any equipment. Relevant anatomy of the intercostal brachial nerve. Origin of the intercostal brachial nerve. Intercostal brachial nerve has a root value of thoracic second nerve. Course of the intercostal brachial nerve. The second thoracic mixed spine nerve after emerging from the spinal cord divides into ventral rami and dorsal rami. Dorsal rami supplies the back muscles and skin, while the ventral ramus enters the second intercostal space between the posterior intercostal membrane and parietal pleura. The second intercostal nerve then courses anteriorly in the costal groove along with its corresponding artery and vein. The nerve continues anteriorly, running between the innermost intercostal and the internal intercostal muscles. In its path in the intercostal space, it courses within or just below the costal groove, running inferior to the intercostal artery and vein. The formula of VAN applies here also. Vein is superior, then artery, and the nerve is lowermost. Near the mid axillary line, it gives lateral cutaneous branch like all the typical spine nerve, but it does not divide into anterior and posterior cutaneous branches like typical intercostal nerve. Rather, it crosses the axilla and enters the arm named as intercostal brachial nerve because it, it is an intercostal nerve and supplies the skin of the arm. This is the diagram showing typical intercostal nerve. You can see mixed spinal nerve gives two branches, ventral and dorsal. The dorsal rami supplies the muscle of the back and the skin, and the ventral rami is moving in the mid axillary line, it gives a lateral branch, which divides in anterior and posterior nerve in typical intercostal nerve. But in case of intercostal nerve, it moves to the arm, does not divide, and then it goes anteriorly and makes the anterior cutaneous nerve, which again gives lateral and medial branches to supply the anterior aspect of the thorax. Intercostal brachial nerve is lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve, which pierces external intercostal space and serratus anterior muscle, and crosses the axilla to medial side of the arm and joins with a filament from the medial cutaneous nerve of arm, which is a branch of the medial nerve. It then pierces the fascia and supplies the floor of axilla and upper posterior medial region of the arm. Here it also communicates with the neighboring posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, which is branch of radial nerve. Rarely a second intercostal nerve is frequently given off from the lateral cutaneous branch of the third intercostal nerve. It supplies the filaments to the axilla and medial side of the arm. Skin innervation. 
The area supplied by the intercostal brachial nerve is upper posterior medial part of the arm and floor of the axilla. This is a diagram showing the cutaneous distribution of the upper limb, anterior and posterior view. Here we can see easily the intercostal brachial nerve supplying the medial portion and posterior portion of the skin in the upper arm in front of the axilla. Uh, anatomy of the intercostal brachial nerve varies from person to person. Kunick et al. in 2001 classified anatomy of the nerve into six types. Type 1 and 2 are the most common uh, variation. In type 1, intercostal brachial nerve arises from T2 alone and does not give off any branch and moves to the arm. In type 2, intercostal brachial nerve arises from the T2 alone, divides in the large trunk and small branches. In type 3, intercostal brachial nerve arises from T2 alone and divides equally into two branches. In fourth variation, it is formed by two equal branches from T1 and T2, no significant branches. In type 5, two separate T2 radical come and no significant branches. In type 6, intercostal brachial nerve arises from T2 alone and has large main trunk and at least two small branches. This is the comparative frequency of the types of the intercostal brachial nerve by different investigators. You see type 1 is from 40 to 60 percent. In most study, in some study of Kumar, it shows 80 percent and Satyajit, it shows 69 percent. This is the most common variation. The second is also from 20 to 30 percent. In one study of present study, it shows 33 percent. And other are rare variations. We will discuss two variations in detail. This is the first variation. In this diagram, it is showing the nerve is coming out from the external intercostal and serratus anterior muscle and entering the axilla alone. This is the second type of intercostal brachial nerve in which it is coming alone from the T2 piercing between the external intercostal and serratus anterior reaching the axilla and then gives the branch to the axillary skin. Applied anatomy. In angina pectoris, patients usually feel left-sided pain in axilla and arm. This is referred to cardiac pain mediated by intercostal brachial nerve. Preoperative assessment and preparation are same like every patient. We take history, do physical general examination, investigation. We do risk assessment and grading of the patient. We optimize the patient if there is any comorbids. We prepare the patient for surgery and anesthesia. We take consent. We confirm NPO and do side marking. Indications. There are two indications of the intercostal brachial nerve. One is when we apply the tourniquet for any procedure in the upper limb. Second is surgery on upper medial arm near axilla. Contraindications are same like uh, other nerves. This is patient refusal and non cooperative hand of the patient. Local infection and sepsis we cannot do. Allergy to the drugs. Complication and side effect. Intravascular injection may occur as the needle passes over the axillary artery to nerve. The axillary artery is subcutaneous in this space. By mistake, we can inject. And infection can occur, and this needs a sterile technique. Intraneural injection is rare, but can occur. Prerequisite of intracastro nerve block. Block is executed in area designated for regional blocks. All facilities must be available in this area, including GA. Availability of resuscitation drugs including lipid solution in case of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Sign in and uh, marking block site. We do this in holding area before taking the patient to the theater or before taking to the block area. Written informed consent and details briefing of the block. Confirm NPO. 18 gauge working IV cannula and contralateral arm is inserted. We apply all standard monitors as for GA. We need a trained assistant for original anesthesia. We use a sterile technique and bright light source is required. Equipment. Basic standard monitors are required as like in every case. High frequency linear ultrasound probe and ultrasound machine is required. Insulated blunt pebble ecogenic needle 50 to 80 millimeter length can be used easily. We need sterile gloves. We need sterile cleansing solution. We need probe cover and sterile jelly. Sterile towels to isolate the block area. We need a 5C syringe with local anesthetic for puncture side analgesia. Ultrasound setting. We put ultrasound machine in front of our eyes. We use a high frequency ultrasound probe with frequency more than 12 or 14 megahertz. We use linear probe. We use in-plane technique. 
out of plane can be used where this is safer. We identify the orientation of needle with the probe. Keep the angle of ultrasound needle parallel to the probe, which is very easily possible in this in this block. Needle length may be 50 to 80 mm may be used. Depth setting is 1 or 2 or we can use 3 cm to view the artery and vein. Sono anatomy of the intercostal brachial nerve. Pre-procedure sono anatomy is essential in every block uh, in this also. We place ultrasound probe transversely like axillary brachial plexus block. We identify intercostal brachial nerve posterior to the axillary artery in subcutaneous tissue which is anatomically posterior. An ultrasound image we see it later to the axillary artery at 2 to 3 o'clock position. We use part to optimize the best view. We will discuss in the next slide what is part. We use color ultrasound to identify axillary artery and vein. Ultrasound probe pressure should be minimum to view axillary artery and axillary vein clearly to avoid intravascular injection. If we fail to find intercostal brachial nerve, we can inject local anesthetic solution 5 to 10 ml under ultrasound guidance to open subcutaneous plane above the deep fascia by hydrodissection on the medial, whole medial side of the arm. And this is a diagram showing part, pressure, alignment, rotation and tilt of the probe. Making position for intercostal brachial nerve, we elevate the bed up to avoid bending of the operator. We keep the patient supine position. We abduct the arm at 90 degree. We abduct the elbow at 90 degree or we can keep it straight. Operator can work from head end of the position. See the next slide. Or from the side of the patient, you can see the next slide. Routine plow support is given to relax neck muscles. This is a diagram showing operator working from the head end side. This is another diagram showing the operator working from the side of the patient. Conduct of the block. Sterile preparation of the area are done and area isolated with towels. We use puncture side analgesia. Probe position will be transverse like axillary brachial plexus block. We identify intercostal brachial nerve in subcutaneous plane near axillary artery at 2 to 3 o'clock position. Inject to 5 to 10 ml solution around her making a donor. And this is the first technique. Alternatively, if we fail to visualize intercostal brachial nerve on ultrasound, we keep the axillary artery in middle portion of the ultrasound view and eject 5 to 10 ml under ultrasound guidance to open subcutaneous plane by hydrodissection throughout middle side of the arm. This is above the deep fascia. We always keep an eye on the needle and we will cut. When reaching near axillary artery and vein, we try to avoid intravascular injection. Third technique, intercostal brachial nerve can be perfectly blocked by using landmark technique by subcutaneous injection of local anesthetic, raising a visible wheel on the medial side of the arm. We can see in the next slides. This is the position of the probe on the axillary artery and on the medial side of the arm. This is the diagram showing the intercostal brachial nerve. You see it is anatomically posterior to the axillary artery and ultrasound image it is lateral to the axillary artery at 2 to 3 o'clock position. This is above the deep fascia. This is the diagram showing local anesthetic solution injected around intercostal brachial nerve and check the axillary artery in the vicinity of the probe. This is the diagram showing alternative technique without ultrasound by raising a wheel of local anesthetic subcutaneously. This is more commonly practiced technique and in the areas where ultrasound is not available. Intraoperative care. We apply full external monitoring as for general anesthesia throughout the procedure. We avoid hypothermia by using full body wear hugger. We isolate the limb by full screen. Seroanalgesia can be given but better after incision or tourniquet to assess the efficacy of the block. Pseudoanalgesia can mark signs of loss, local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Monitor for the local anesthetic systemic toxicity. Keep in a hand lipid solution in OR and recovery also. Alternatively, close verbal communication maintained with the patient throughout the procedure. In case of inadequate block, get ready to convert for GA. Post-operative care. We gently shift the patient to the post anesthesia care unit, we apply monitors, we monitor for local anesthetic system of toxicity, we inform patient about approximate time of return of the sensation in the limb. 
exchange cell phone contact to assist in case of problem or queries. Early mobility is possible. Early resumption of food and drink can be done. Analgesia, IV or oral SOS may be prescribed which may need when the block we are off. Clinical tips. We put ultrasound machine in front of the operator so we should not move the neck. Sononatomy is mandatory before practical conduct of block. We use sterile technique. We confirm orientation of the needle with the ultrasound probe. We use implant technique. Color Doppler should be used to avoid intravascular injection. We always support the hand holding the probe and the hand holding the needle. Optimal volume is 5 to 10 ml. If we identify intracastroparechial nerve, we make a donut of local anesthetic around it. If we fail to identify intracastroparechial nerve, we open subcutaneous plane by injecting local anesthetic with hydrodissection under ultrasound guidance. We don't move the needle until full length needle is visible with bevel cut. We can block intracastroparechial nerve by injecting subcutaneous on landmark technique by raising a visible wheel on the same area. Thank you.